Welcome to Chaos and Cryptography. In this video, we'll see DNA based cryptography. So, the points that we'll be seeing are what is DNA, how DNA is being used in cryptography, what is DNA coding and decoding, and what are the operations of DNA that can be applied for encryption. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a hereditary material in humans and many other organisms. It carries information from generation to generation. DNA consists of four nucleic acid bases called A adenine, C cytosine, G guanine and T thiamine. The complement acid bases are A and T and C and G. From the diagram, you can understand that A and T are paired together and C and G are paired together. So, we will not go into further details of the biological information of DNA, but rather stick on to the information that is required for DNA based cryptography. Just as DNA carries information from one generation to another generation, DNA coding is also used to carry and hide information. So this is applied in information storage, security and cryptography. Now we will see what is DNA coding. So we will be mapping the digital data to the four nucleic acids A, C, G and T. So we have the binary information 00, 01, 10 and 11 which will be encoded or mapped to the four bases A, C, G and T. So by doing so we have four factorial combinations that is 24 types of coding rules. We also have to keep in mind that A and T are complementary, similarly C and G are complementary. So the only rules that satisfy the Watson Crick complementary rule are only 8. So you can see the DNA complements in the first table. So we have C is equal to 0, 0. And the complement is G is equal to 1, 1. Similarly, T is equal to 0, 1. And the complement is A is equal to 1, 0. So, you can see that the nucleic basis A, C, G and T should also be a complement. At the same time, the binary data 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 when mapped also must be a complement. So, if you see in the first case, C is equal to 0, 0 and G is equal to 1, 1. So, in that case, C and G are complement. Similarly, 0, 0 and 1, 1 are complement. In the next case, T is equal to 0, 1 and A is equal to 1, 0. So, even in that case, T and A are complements. Similarly, 0, 1 and 1, 0 are complements. So, by applying this rule, we find that only 8 rules satisfy the complementary conditions. So, this is was found by Watson Crick and it was named as the Watson Crick complement rule. So, finally, we have only 8 rules for DNA coding. We have to keep in mind that the rule that we used for encoding the data during the encryption process must be used for decoding the data in the decryption site. Now we come to the DNA encryption. Once we have encoded the data, we have all the information as combinations of A, C, G and T. During the encryption process, we perform DNA addition 
using the rules given in the first table and during the decryption process we apply the DNA subtraction using the rules that are given in the second table. The second method of encryption is using DNA XOR operation. So in this case for both the encryption and decryption process we use DNA XOR. So there are two methods of encrypting using DNA rules. The first is either we use DNA addition and subtraction or we use DNA XOR. Now let's have a look at an example of how to encode and decode using DNA encoding rules. So we, now we know that we have eight rules. We can use any one of the rules for encoding and decoding. So here I consider rule number one and rule number four. And here for your reference, I have listed the rule one and here rule four. So for rule one, zero zero is mapped to A, one one is to T, zero one to C and one zero to G. So again here we see that zero zero and one one are complements. Similarly, A and T are complements. 0, 1 and 1, 0 are complements. Similarly, C and G are complements. Now, let's take the example of 150 as the data. We convert it to the binary form and we get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 1, 0. We pair the 8 uh, binary digits. And now we map to this code. So, 1, 0, we get G. 0, 1, we get C. Again, 0, 1, we get C. And again, 1, 0, we get G. So, the encoded data of 150 is G, C, C, G. Now, let's say we are encoding with rule 4. We take 150. Again, we convert it to binary and pair it. I will list the rules here. For 10 it is T, for 01 it is A, again 01A, and finally 10 it is T. So this is how we encode with rules. Always keep in mind that for decoding we have to use the same rule that we used for encoding. So in this case it's very simple. If you want to decode the given data, so here T for T. Now say that given string is T A A T, for T is 10, it's a reverse process, for A is 0, 1, again for A is 0, 1, and for T is 10. And converting to decimal, we get the original data 150. Now we'll see how to encrypt and decrypt a given data with DNA cryptology. So as we seen earlier, for encryption we use DNA addition and for decryption we use DNA subtraction. So the simple diagram showing how to encrypt a given data. So this is the plain data. We apply DNA addition rules with the key and we get the cipher data. And for decryption it's a reverse process wherein we give the cipher data and the key and apply to the DNA subtraction rules and we get the original plain data. Now let's see an example. So for encryption, we take a data 150 and convert into the respective binary digits and by applying rule 1 as we've seen earlier we get C sorry G C C G. Now we take a key which is 75. This key is going to be used for both the encryption and decryption process. We convert this also to the binary digits and apply the rule 1 and we get the four characters C A G T. 
Now please have your DNA addition rules and with that we have to calculate the cipher data. So the, the first one GCCG is the plain data and CAGT is the key. So in your DNA addition the first column must be mapped to the plain data and the topmost row refers to the key. So when we map we get C and G for C and G we'll get G so for G and C we get G C and A we get A for C and G we get G and G and T we get C so this is a cipher data converting it to binary by applying rule 1 we get 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 1 and therefore the cipher data now we'll see the second method of encrypting a given data using DNA XOR method so here for encryption we pass the plain data and the key and it is DNA XOR with the DNA XOR rules to get the cipher data. For decryption is a reverse process. The cipher data and the key is being DNA XOR to get the plain data. So we apply the same set of rules in both the encryption and decryption process. Now let's see the example. Again we take the plain data 150, we apply rule 1 and encode it, we get GCCG. So here we take the key as 75 and again applying rule 1 we get CAGT. Now for the encryption process. Now we are going to apply the rules. Please have the DNA XOR rule table. The first column will be mapped to the plain data and the first row will be mapped to the key. So for G and C we get G, C and A we get A, C and G we get G and G and T we get A. So this is the cipher data. By applying rule 1 for decoding we get 10, 00, 00, 10 and 00. When we convert this to binary we get 136. So this is the encrypted data of the given data 150. Now on the decryption side. We get the cipher data which is 136 and we convert it, decode it to using DNA rules 1. We get GA, GA. We XOR it with the key. C A G T. Again applying the DNA XOR rules, we for G and C we get